So now even your web browsers want to get in on the virtual reality fun, and Google's going to help it get there. Joining us uh, to discuss this is Stephen Shanklin, senior reporter for CNET. How's it going, Stephen? It's going well. Thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great to get you on finally. Um, so first of all, explain a little bit about the purpose of WebVR. Why do, why do we need this? Okay. So what WebVR does is it marries virtual reality with the browser. So you've heard of virtual reality with, you know, Oculus headsets or HTR Vive or uh, Samsung Gear VR. There are lots of different headsets that you put on. The big problem with VR is what do you do with it? So you can play games, you can explore virtual worlds. There are different things you can do, but there's not, you know, an immense amount of things you can do. What WebVR does is it lets web developers create content for virtual reality. And the, the good thing about that is it means they create it once, like they create a website once, and it works on all these different devices. So in principle, WebVR will bring more virtual reality content to virtual reality headsets. So there's something to actually do with those headsets. So it's more or less a standard, and now the browsers are working on bringing it in to support that. Is Google one of the first to do this, or is Google the last of the party? Uh, Google is the first to actually ship it in the stable version of its browser. Mozilla actually was uh, very early on the WebVR bandwagon, but they haven't got it out in the final version of Firefox yet. Microsoft Edge was the next to jump on board. They're still in preliminary stages. And as is common these days, Apple with Safari is the laggard. They're, it's not a bad browser, but they're not the first one to pick up the new shiny standards. Right. So uh, Chrome is the first to ship it in its mainstream version. It's one of those moments where, you know, you remember when it was just the web and then it was apps, like apps was the future and everyone, you know, wanted to do things in apps. And now the promise of this is that you don't have to go through apps because I mean, right, like that's, uh, I used the Daydream VR, the Daydream View for a while and it was just such, so annoying to have to like open this app and download and open this app. So is the idea that you will just be able to, you know, walk around in VR and in, in, inside the internet? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I wouldn't get too uh, attached to the idea that it will all just sort of be magically immersive and you won't have to point and click and launch apps and stuff. There's still going to be some navigation overhead. The thing about the web is as it's got more sophisticated, it has become more like native apps that you load on your Windows machine to your Mac or you know tapping an icon on your phone. So I think you're still going to be visiting one particular destination with web VR, and then you'll back out of that and go into another one. It's not like you're going to be skipping from one web VR world to another, at least initially. That could happen in the longer run. It's kind of funny because uh, there was a technology called Vermal years and years ago, virtual reality markup language from the 1990s. Uh, it was a complete bust, but it was very similar to what web VR is actually trying to accomplish. And the interesting thing is now with today's hardware and today's headsets, it actually seems like it is at least technologically feasible, but there are going to be some big challenges. Yeah. Um, now, there are some examples out there to kind of play around with. What are, what are some of those? Like explain a little bit of, about some of the experience that you can get uh, with this kind sure. of technology. So it's sort of similar if you've played with, with virtual reality before. It's, it's uh, similar to that. There are immersive experiences where you can jump into uh, – somebody's done a, a film where you can watch uh, uh, the story of some coral reefs in Papua New Guinea, and you can you know, swim around with the fishes. Somebody's done the 360-degree video, and you could see that on a regular VR headset. It's just that this happens to take place inside the web. There's an interesting documentary about grizzly bears in Canada, and – that, you know, there's, that's what you're seeing right here. You can kind of uh, walk around this virtual world and click in on aspects of it and get more information. It's all narrated. And if you were, 20, and if I was wearing, video. if I was wearing a headset right now, I could look around freeform and it would be a little bit more like representative of the actual VR experience. Exactly. You turn Got your it. head, the view turns. That gets to one of the challenges of web VR though, which is that you have this extra layer of technology in between the VR content and you, which is the web. And mm -hmm that can slow things down a little bit. And as you probably know, with virtual reality, uh, people are really sensitive to the lag, the latency. If you move your head and there's a, a, a pause before the scene changes, that can be really distracting, can even be nauseating, and it certainly is no fun. So that's one of the big challenges that the web VR folks are gonna have to solve. Another big one is 
that uh, is the support complication. So whenever you have a new web technology standard like uh, video or audio or 3D graphics, there have been a lot of standards that have arrived over the years. There's a challenge to build it into the browsers and to get developers to take advantage of it. But with WebVR, there's another problem, which is you have to get the hardware makers to build the support into their browsers, too. It's much harder than just getting it into Firefox or Chrome. You have to get a browser in your Samsung Gear VR headset or, or, or whatever device you're using. So that's a, it's a big, complicated array of which browsers support it, which headsets support it. It's going to be a while before this really catches on. Yeah, yeah. How important do you think um, this sort of challenge, let's say, bringing VR to your web browser in this way, how important is that to the commercialization of VR, do you think? I would say it's it's probably not the gating factor. There are already technologies out there like Unity 3D that's very widely used that can help a developer bring content to multiple devices. But I think this, anytime you have a, a widely adopted standard like the web, uh, the web is obviously very widely used, mm -hmm. it does lower the uh, difficulty level for some people. And there already are a lot of programmers out there who are we're web savvy. So this potentially does open up VR to a new audience of developers who might not have been interested anymore. So I don't think this is going to be the make or break uh, uh, technology that enab that gets that brings uh, VR to the mainstream. But I think it helps get it that direction. Personally, I'm a bit of a VR skeptic, and I'm not convinced it's going to hit that mainstream uh, anytime soon. But this is the kind of thing that will help. Awesome. Uh, Stephen Shanklin from CNET. It's really great to get, finally get you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. You bet. Thanks for having me. All right. At ST Shank on Twitter as well. Thanks, Stephen.